Halloween H2O is way better than Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills. Yeah, I've said it. What the hell are you talking about? But I'm not trying to start beef here, but I did not enjoy Halloween 2018 or Halloween Kills. And I recently rewatched Halloween H2O having always liked the film. And I've come out even more liking the film in, in light of recent events of Halloween Kills annoying me so much. I think that Halloween H2O has a better sense of the mystery of Michael Myers. Now, this is where a lot of fans disagree, because many will say they enjoy the fact that David Gordon Green had him get captured and Halloween kills. They enjoyed seeing him go back to the asylum because it explains what happened. Whereas one of my favourite things about Halloween H2O is it really leads with pure mystery. It leads with pure and utter mystery of Michael Myers. And it works because... He hasn't been seen since the events of Halloween 2, in this timeline Halloween 2 happened. And he just hasn't been seen. So what I love about the universe in Halloween H2O is that Michael appeared, caused chaos, and that's it. Like, over. No one knows where he went, what the fuck happened. I know it needs to be explained, you could say, well, it was Michael in the Bahamas, this and that. But here's why I don't think it needs to be explained. It's because he hadn't been seen since the event. What they're planning to do in Halloween Kills is he's been back of, you know, since coming, escaping, and he's gonna bugger off for four years. That is where my mind starts asking questions, but when you've got him as such a mysterious character that you have this crazy night of mayhem and chaos where we knew nothing about him, and then he disappeared, and then he comes back again, years, 20 years later, for me, that's mysterious. That's creepy as hell, like, what is he? Is he this, just this curse? Is he a spectre who's, who's actually just not actually human? I think mean, H2O does a lot with that, you know, how he's just set off and he's back, like he just decides to come back after Laurie. And a lot of people obviously don't have the brother and sister story, and now my issue with people saying that is, is that it doesn't have to mean that that's his goal. People have said, well, if you make Laurie his brother and sister, it means his entire goal is to kill his family, but it, it could just mean that he killed his sister and he wants to kill his other sister, because he's a killer. Like it doesn't, you know what I mean, it still can be random. He just selected to kill his sister and he wants to kill his other sister. And I do actually think the brother and sister thing, they make it work in H2O and I will get to that later in the video. I really like the opening scene in H2O. I think it's creepy as all hell. I think it's one of the best suspense scenes in the Halloween series. It starts things off the right way, brings back the nurse, brings back Marion Chambers for a reason. Imagine that. She's in it for Michael to ransack her, you know, files and find the file on the Royce Road. I find that whole scene so disturbing because Michael has literally just been randomly triggered. He's just randomly returned and just hell-bent on going after Laurie Strode again 20 years to the day. It's really weird, that scene. And you see that whole, you see the whole of her files ransacked. Then Michael's stalking her in the house with the Halloween 6 mask, a really good mask. For me, this weird laser-focused Michael coming back after 20 years was a really interesting, disturbing way to do it. And they knew, let's just not explain it. You know, let's let the mind do the wondering, or let's just make the fact that he hasn't been explained where he is, make him more scary. The fact that he just appears every now and again, that's the Michael Myers character, the shape. Obviously, there's many problems with the rest of the masks in this film, masks, Plural. I do not understand to this day why the Halloween filmmakers like every time they get a good Halloween film it's like right this is a good Halloween film but it's, we've got to put some shit in it's got to be a little bit shit because it's Halloween how can we fuck it up in some way let's mess up the mask I don't know what they were doing I, whoever was coming up with the mask this is no offense to people with OCD had some kind of OCD like every five minutes changing the mask CGI mask Weird alien probe mask. Just bizarre, like eye holes mask, Halloween 6 mask. You can't have different masks for Michael Myers from one scene to the bloody next. And that's why it didn't H2O, and it's a big glaring issue of H2O, and you know, lots of people have said, and I say it as well, if you would deep fake in the Halloween 6 mask, or the 78 mask in this film, it would be possibly the best Halloween sequel. I prefer this take on Laurie's trauma. I really, really do. I like the fact that she's managed to do something with her life and not be defined by it, but still she's suffering. It's a really realistic take on trauma. It's more realistic than the Laurie in the new films, who's literally just stayed in place and hasn't... I know there's different kind of trauma. I know some people can never overcome in any way. But most people, and I'm someone who suffers from mental health, 
most people go out into the world and do things and carry that burden with them but try and do their best and it's always a daily struggle and it's a daily struggle for Laurie in this film so it's more relatable to me she's trying you know she's trying you know and she can't break past that barrier that's really relatable for depressed and anxiety ridden people and people who have been through trauma Halloween 2018 and Kills is just give up fuck it don't even try and move on it's almost like in 2018 and Kills not only is she defined by her trauma but she's chosen to be and it makes no sense because as we know Michael has no interest in her there's nothing really special about Michael in that there's no reason for her to refer to him as the boogeyman it's really weird that really bizarre stuff but like, Laurie is a little bit of a bitch in H2O what the fuck do you think you're doing you know she's always lashing out to her son played by Josh Hartnett She's always lashing out to people around her, but when she's blunt, she regrets it. It's a very human performance, very, very good performance by Jamie Lee Curtis. I must say, I do really, really like Josh Hartnett in this as well. I think it's quite a strong debut performance. You know, obviously his hair, he looks like an absolute tit. I don't know what, you know, he deliberately messed up his hair in, in between scenes, apparently, because he didn't want to be seen as clean cut, and they were tending to do that. So that dodgy hairstyle for Josh Hartnett was actually his choice. <laughs> Cheers, man. Get cool. out of here. All right. Get out of here. Comb your hair. But he has some really, really good moments with Laurie where their relationship's so strained. And again, it's believable dialogue. I find H2O has believable dialogue. I find the exchanges between Laurie and John more compelling than the exchanges between Karen and Laurie. What do you want me to say? That it's over? That we should try to get on with some attempt at a happy existence, Mom. Because all the shit that's going on in your head is leaking out on me, and I can't take it anymore. You told me yourself you watched him burn. I didn't exactly stay to see his ashes. 20 years. 20 years. Don't you think he would have shown up by now? What's he waiting for, huh? Halloween Hates Troy also has a um, toilet scene. <laughs> it does. It has a toilet scene as does 2018 and the toilet scene is much better in H2O. H2O is a better toilet. It takes the innocence of the moment away. You know, this mother is taking her child to the toilet. They can't get into the ladies, so they have to go into the men's, you know, in the, out in the middle of nowhere, they're obviously driving somewhere. And she's just trying to do the best for her child and take her in, in you know, in, in the toilet. And Michael comes in, like, because Michael's car's broken down, steals her bag, and then she sees him in the mirror, and he looks very bizarre and spectre and out of place in the regular world. And that's a really, really great way to shoot Michael. The way he turns around just looks um, with those dark, dark eyes when he actually used the proper mask in that scene. I find that scene really, really subtle and fantastic and well done and well paced and interesting. You don't know what's going to happen. It's just about seeing Michael out in the open. You know, such a bizarre entity Michael is. He doesn't belong. And he doesn't belong in that scene. And I really feel like 2018 and Kills forgot that. They, they make Michael belong because he's in every moment. They don't even try and shoot him sparingly. In 2018, that bloody toilet scene belongs in the toilet. Get in the toilet. Flush it. Like, it's so stupid. Like, it, one, he's unmasked. It looks like Trev down the pub. And it, it's, you see his face all the time. And I keep getting people telling me, oh, you don't see his face. Yes, you do. If seeing his face from the side, seeing his face from the like, overhead or on the other side, you see this bloody face. Don't tell me anything else, lad. So, and it's just a brutal, brutal kill. Just bang, bang, bang. Scream, scream, scream. Very Rob Zombie like that scene. People forget that. Brutal, brutal, brutal. It just lacks all the subtlety of Michael Myers. And I, I hate that scene so much. And it showed me what I was in for with that series. You know, because you take H2O. And the, the thing is, you've got to respect H2O because it came out at a time of Scream. And I understand why it went in the direction of mimicking Scream in some areas so it could be up to date. But it still went, I'm going to retain Michael's presence in that scene. I'm actually going to do it. In this scene, I'm going to respect Michael and do that. And I really respect that. In multiple scenes, let's keep Michael's aura. Let's not make him just ghost face. I respect that, you know. But in this, it's just like, 
we're in the you know new now just make michael kill 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 we just need to get gore and get people back in the cinema just that's what it was about they made no effort to maintain that character at all i said the word subtlety and hey has lots of subtlety like that conversation that laurie has in her lesson with her class where she's reading out the story of frankenstein it's all about fate it's all about confronting your monster i love that because again, it's what Halloween is. It's simple. It's to the point. Molly, please. Do you have any thoughts on Victor and Elizabeth? Well, <clears throat> um, well I, th I think that Victor should have confronted the monster sooner. I mean, he's completely responsible for Elizabeth's death. He was, he was so paralyzed by fear that he never did anything. It, it took death for the guy to get a clue. And why do you think he was finally able to confront his monster? Well, I think that Victor had reached a point in his life where he had nothing left to lose. I mean, the monster saw to that by killing off everybody that he loved. Victor finally had to face it. It was about redemption. It was his fate. When Laurie and Michael come face to face, how much better would it be if he had those black eyes? I don't get it. You know, I feel like they just thought, they must have just thought, if you see his eyes, you'll kind of buy into the brother and sister thing a bit more because it'll humanizing and then obviously later on that Laurie traps Michael at the end of the film you see his eyes again and I really really like that end where he reaches out for her I feel like of all the attempts to ever have Michael do anything human that's one of the best in the series because all it is is just he knows it's his sister he's reaching out but imagine if he had the black eyes in that moment that would be so, such a fantastic iconic scene, I think, because it would be like the last remnants of humanity, a hand reaching out from this black soul. But instead you see his eyes looking like some plonker. You'd probably feel more if you didn't see his eyes, because it would be, again, the last attempt, you know, just to say, I know you're my sister, you know, that's good, it gets you thinking. Jamie Lee Curtis is a hypocrite because she likes to talk about how she wanted to do this film and kill Michael Myers off and she was really annoyed when they didn't kill him off. But then she does this new series where they didn't kill him off. And it's just because David Alden Green's saying the right things. He's spinning the right yarns. You know, he's he's got the Halloween fans wrapped around his finger. And I, and I don't like how this film is getting shit on now because it's a good movie. It really, really is. It's probably the best you could have done bringing this franchise back with Laurie. Is it perfect? No, but for me it it works. You know, there's there's too many false jump scares, the masks look bloody terrible in certain moments. The film does turn a bit to action once it's Laurie versus Michael, but that was kind of inevitable. It's a very memorable sequence that wraps up the film, so but I just have fun whenever I watch it. You know, I really, really do, and I and I still feel like I'm watching Halloween. And no, I really recommend you go back and watch H2O, because it really is a standout film of the 90s, bringing back the slasher craze. And it really pays homage well to Halloween, in my opinion. It's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. But it's one of the best Halloween sequels. Thanks for watching, everyone. Do you agree that Halloween H2O is better than Kills in 2018? And if you do... Let me know why in the comments, and if you don't, let me know why also in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone, see you guys next time.